Hello, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. This right here is a half inch 45 elbow. This is a half inch 90 degree elbow and another 90 degree elbow. So that's two of them, one of them. And you got it uh, right here. You got a T, plumbing T. This is a half inch T. All three holes are one half inch and pipe thread for plumbing. Uh, these three uh, nipples right here are uh, two inch by half inch, I mean half inch by two inch, half inch by two inch, and half inch by three inch. Then uh, we got a half inch to quarter inch coupler and a half inch to three eighths inch coupler. And this right here is one of the caps off the end of the longer pipe. This one here is one half by 18 inches and that's going to be for the tail. And this one is one half by 24 inches or two foot, and that's going to be for the that's going to be for the part that goes down inside the tower. Okay, and then I want to take a video over here. Am I aimed at it right? There we are. And then we want to go over here. Basically, this is an elbow three-quarter inch PVC, another three-quarter inch PVC elbow, and two pieces of PVC. This is the thicker lined wall, and this is the thinner lined wall. These are three-quarter PVC. The pipe slides inside here. This is the piece I use for the start of the tail, and this is for the end of the tail. See, this will not go in here. Or you can get uh, the one-inch PVC and just let it be sloppy up there, and it'll still work and do well. And and that way you can use the thicker wall. All right, now we're fixing to put the whole framework together. Hello, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. Ow! Actually, I just hit that. <laughs> Thought it'd make you laugh. Ping! Magic. Okay, this is a T, a half inch T. This is the half inch by two inch long nipple, a 45 degree elbow, and then the longer pipe, which I prefer to be somewhere around four foot. But basically, if you're going cheap, this one isn't very long. This is only a uh, two foot long, 24 inch. Okay, first thing that you want to do is get this nice and tight into here. All these connections I'm talking about to start off with need to be very tight, as tight as you can get. But then when you get over to here, you have an adjustment. And what I'm saying is when you crank this this way you're tightening it and you're moving metal inside these threads because these are tapered coming back see it's going to be strong now what I prefer to use is another piece of pipe or something to stick into the end and you can do a lot of torquing on this now watch once this comes loose I spent a while getting this there but now you see now it's loose it's going to be real loose this metal is now moved it's no longer tight here I have to pass the point where I was. Now, if I pass the point right here, now I'm strong, but I say, okay, I want to take it back. Guess what? It is now loose. The best thing to do is crank this all the way around. And when you're done, you want to tack weld right into the joints on each one of these. You want to tack weld real good. This is not the way the tail should be. I'll show you in a couple pictures from a friend of mine. Anyway, so I'm going to crank this and a little tighter so I got some stability is this one okay this is not going on right now all right anchor it up on your leg pull her up all right now I'm gonna look at this if I'm gonna have my motor and stuff on the right side I could use this right now Now I'm going to go for the adjustment. Take it back. Now I can see that this piece is not going exactly straight up. So it's 
tilted back the way I want it to be. This is what I want. If this is straight down, I don't want this to be exactly parallel. I want it to come up a bit. This keeps your blades away from your pole, plus the wind. It doesn't go straight across. It comes down just a little. Anywhere three to five degrees. I'd say that's pretty optimum. Now I'm going to take all this off. That was in like five threads. Better bearing once it's out. Once it, once you turn it backwards. All right, I'm going to use this short pipe nipple, and I'm using the half inch to quarter inch because we're going to have to tap, drill this out a little bigger, and then tap it so it fits the threads on our motor. This is where I'm going to put. This is where I'm going to put the motor. The tail section is going to come off the back here. I'm going to go ahead and tighten this off camera. I'll just go ahead and put the tail piece on, which isn't very long. This is three inches long. Okay. On our parts description, I didn't have enough parts involved. I'm going to use this 90 degree elbow after this. And this is what's going to be a little strange to some of you. But I want this pointing back in. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and connect this in here. Give me something to pry with. Maybe a few more threads. There we go. Crack this piece in. It'd be a lot easier if I had did it on a vise or on a bench. Anyway, I've got this in the angle I'm going to put it to. I'm going to go around one more crank, but I'm not going to do that on camera. And then uh, I'm going to definitely, I'm going to weld that joint, that joint, that joint, and that joint. The one to the motor is not going to matter. Anyway, right now I need a small pipe nipple, the small as you can find and get. And that happens to be this jewel right here. It's one and a half inch long, and it is half inch thread. Now, I could either put this 45 on here and put the other pipe out and figure out which direction I want my thing. I think I'm going to use the 45 instead of the other 90 degree elbow. Makes it pretty easy. From this little contraption right here, after you get it tight, you can pack, get up to your point of adjustment and you can get any angle you want for that tailpiece. That's great. So don't finish tightening this one up completely. That's what my tail will go off. Don't finish tightening this one up completely until you get your uh, fiberglass tail on or you get your engine, you know, your motor mounted and all that. Then you go ahead and adjust this one and get the tack well done. At this point, I can have it. Let's explain the operation of this. The motor and the blades are here. This is your framework. When the wind pushes real hard, it's going to try to turn this like this. It wants to go this direction job of the tail is, let's get this into a decent position, I can explain it a lot better, there we go, like I said, you can get any angle you want just by rotating these back or forth, so if I want this in a 45 and I found it in a 45 when the tail piece is on, the wind pushes this, tries to make it go like this, but the wind is still keeping the tail this way, but as you can see, this is now at an angle and what it does it hinges and makes that tail rise. So the length and the weight of the tail is what keeps it into the wind. When the wind dies back down a little bit, the weight of the tail pushes it right back into the wind. I'm Scott Brown, Green Wind and Other Home Energies. So here's the profile of it, looking at it from your view. The blades will be here. And notice this is tilted back. All this tack weld here, 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 these two especially. Because if this turns, it comes down and your blades bite your poles. So you really want to tack weld these two. And tack weld these just to keep them straight when you're done. Anyway, I'm Scott Brown, Green Wind, and other home energies.